This is the final table from the first ever Premier League season. Just take a look at it. Look how incredible it is. 22 teams each playing 42 games. I mean, just look at QPR. They finished fifth above Liverpool, Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea and Man City. Perennial yo-yo as Norwich City finished third. Villa with a title challenge up against Man United. But surviving relegation on goal difference just were Oldham. Founders of the Premier League who this season that we're currently in now will play in the National League. Meaning they are the first ever team to have played in the Premier League who have now also played in the non-league system as well this is going to be a really interesting video if you like your football then i'm sure you'll love this video please hit that like button please subscribe if you're new for more football stories like this if you have any football stories weird and wonderful connections like this one like the former premier league team who are now non-league let me know in the comment section below and i'll do my best to get there when i can let's head on through to oldham and investigate this amazing story and why have i brought you to this random little piece of road of intersection this little car park just here well somewhere behind me on featherstall road in the late 1800s oldham athletic were formed well kind of in july of 1895 john garland and his son formed a football club named pine villa they had a meeting which took place in number 238 Featherstall road the road that i'm on now which was the Featherstall and junction inn i will currently overlay a picture of said pub john garland was the licensee his son fred and a few regular drinkers within the boozer formed what is now oldham athletic but they were called pine villa they weren't called oldham athletic at first um for their first few years as a club yes they were called pine villa certainly a strange name isn't it and nothing close to Oldham Athletic like we know today. At the next location I will clear up why they began as Pine Villa. It's quite an interesting story. Um, part of it is the location, part of it is due to another club. It's quite a it's quite a fascinating one why they all called it really but just relating back to the pub a second, I love how in Britain we have all these amazing old football clubs that were formed in places like pubs. I mean Motherwell, they were formed in a pub on a street called Merry Street. How fitting is that? People getting merry in a pub and forming a football team. Celtic formed in a church. Liverpool formed in a pub. Let me know some more in the comment section below of different teams that were formed in places like this. I mean, football isn't just about people turning up and kicking a ball around in the park and thinking, let's form a club. It usually like permeates the culture. I mean, the people that would have drunk in this pub for decades before there was ever a football team and then a football team gets made called Pine Villa they later become Oldham Athletic and then they later become Premier League founders and then they're non-league and they've been managed by Paul Scholes and Harry Kuehl all these sequence of events that have happened through the people that would have once just drank in a pub and thought let's start a football team when a lot of clubs formed in the late 1800s um, a lot of clubs were formed out of works teams for people who worked in mills or factories etc and Oldham Athletic were no different or Pine Villa were no different and just in front of me here this street which we're about to walk onto is Sherwood Street on Sherwood Street and I think this is true from the research I've done from the National Archives we've gone deep for the research this time around stood Pine Mill there was a mill here and I believe that a lot of the people who worked in the mill ended up playing for the football team. And, no, sorry, that's incorrect. Maybe some of the people from the mill did play in the football team, but there was a football pitch which stood in the shadows of the mill. So I guess they'd have got players from maybe all over, but there was a football pitch around here and a mill. The mill was called Pine Mill, and thus the Pine from Pine Villa was born. And that was sort of the first name of Oldham. But what about the Villa? Aston Villa were the most successful team, one of the biggest clubs around at the time. And obviously, as we saw from earlier, they also finished second in the Premier League in that first season, whereas Oldham just about survived relegation. Look at where they are now. Villa, Premier League, Coutinho, Steven Gerrard, and Oldham, a non-league, of course. So yeah, Oldham Athletic used to be known as Pine Villa due to their first ever pitch being in the shadows of the Pine Mill and then taking the Villa off of Aston Villa, who were one of the biggest teams of the era. Obviously, the mills and the factories 
that are sort of city centre, or like they were back in the 1800s, have shut down a lot after the deindustrialization of Britain um, over the last few decades. But during the 1800s, it was obviously um, a hugely industrial area, all these towns and cities and stuff. And um, yeah, that's where a lot of the football teams were born out of. And obviously there was a pitch here where Oldham once played, but they were only known as Pine Villa, I think, for four years. In 1899, they did change their name after another team in Oldham, I think called Oldham County. I think they folded and Pine Villa became Oldham Athletic. And that is where the team that we know today got their name. Here we go. This is my favorite part of the video. When I do these kind of videos about the history of clubs is when I show you this, the league history, the league finishes of Oldham Athletic. So it wasn't just the Premier League era where they were up the top and had some success. After their name change and in the early 1900s, the club immediately gained professional status. They played in the Lancashire Combination Lancashire Leagues and they quickly gained access to the Football League in 19, the 1907 to 1908 season. After three years in the second division, the Latics gained promotion to the first division. Within a couple of seasons, Oldham had announced themselves as serious contenders. They finished fourth in the league in the 1912-13 season and reached the FA Cup semis, losing out to Aston Villa, the team who they used to be named after in a weird way. They lost the league by one point. That was as close as they would ever come to winning the league. The Latics' early success was only halted by the First World War. They struggled to find their feet in between the wars and they returned to the second division in 1923 it would be 68 years before they played top division football again many of the players from their squad though had retired in and around the war years um, or had been killed in said wars as well really sadly they finished 21st in the mid 1930s which saw them relegated to the third division north following the return of competitive football after world war ii though there was no immediate success for oldham athletic it wasn't until the appointment of george hardwick as player manager in November of 1950 that the club found real form. He was England's captain two years previously in fact and only cost, uh, well only, he cost the club 15 grand which was a lot at the time for a third division club as you can imagine, £15,000 to come in as a player manager. In his first full season in charge they finished fourth after topping the table for a considerable amount of the season. They fit, they even had gates as high as 33,000 to watch them play local rivals Stockport County. It was around that era that they had a record win, 11-2 up against Chester. A man called Eric Gemmel scored seven in that game, a record which still stands to this date apparently. They did eventually gain promotion again to the second division, but with an aging squad, the season after was a massive disappointment. They only won eight games. Oldham finished in last place and returned to the third division north again. Oldham then became founding members of the newly formed 4th Division. In the following season, they finished 23rd, their lowest position in the entire league ever, and had to apply for re-election, which they passed only just um, ahead of Gateshead. In the 1970-71 season, Oldham got promoted again back up to the 3rd Division. So how funny is that? They were founders of the 4th Division and the Premier League. Really, really funny, actually. Um, yeah, they, they got promoted again. In June 1982, the club appointed Joe Royler, as their manager. They did okay. They mar narrowly missed out on promotion here and there. Royals Latics had a fantastic few runs in the cup. They got to Wembley um, in the 1990 League Cup final versus Nottingham Forest where they sadly lost 1-0. The next season, Oldham didn't have a huge amount of success but instead found success by winning the second division and returned to the first division for the first time in 68 years. So they weren't as good in the cups but they actually got back to the first division, like I say, for the first time in 68 years. In their first season back, they finished 17th and became founding members of the newly formed Premier League. After another two seasons at the top level, Oldham faced relegation yet again. Uh, they kind of struggled in the Premier League by the looks of things and during the following season, the Joe Royal era came to an end as he left the club for Everton. During Joe Royal's era, Oldham Athletic actually reached the FA Cup semi-finals twice, both times losing to Manchester United. In 1994, they were less than a minute away from winning. They were 1-0 up in an extra time. Mark Hughes scored an equaliser and uh, that ended in a one-all draw. And in the replay, they lost 4-1 at Main Road. The initial game was at Wembley. And a lot of Oldham fans say that this was the beginning of the end of their sort of successful period. In the modern era, sadly, Oldham have struggled a lot. As you would have seen from that graph, the way it just plummeted 
um, after their early years in the Premier League. Um, and they've had some pretty poor owners, um, as I would have touched on earlier. They had Paul Scholes as manager and I think Harry Kewell as manager as well, as well as a few other sort of bigger name managers that you may have heard of. They spent a hell of a lot of money on players and wages um, that eventually sort of crippled the club financially. I won't go into it too much in this video, except to tell you that they've had a few different owners with administration problems, liquidation looming over the club, transfer embargoes, that kind of thing. Um, but HITC Sevens have done a fantastic video about it. Um, I think they put, maybe not the title, but within the thumbnail, the worst run club in the world. Um, I'm not sure if it's as badly run these days. Obviously, they are in the National League now after getting relegated um, last year. But yeah, they do a fantastic job of it, of explaining it all. HITC Sevens in amazing detail. So um, do go and check that video out for a bit more context on that stuff. But here we are now at Oldham Athletic Stadium. Look, a stadium that just 30 years ago was a Premier League club. Think of the clubs now that are in the Premier League. Bournemouth, for instance, who probably when Oldham were in the Prem, Bournemouth would have been way further down the, uh, the divisions. But look at this, now it has Vanarama, the obviously National League sponsor. Proud members of the Vanarama National League. Look at that. That means they're the fifth tier. They're out of the EFL, having been Premier League founders 30 years ago. You're a local Oldham Athletic yes, fan. How yeah. long have you been supporting the club? Well, I'm 71 now, so I've been supporting them since I was 10 year old. So what, 61 years now. So explain to everybody how yeah. many divisions you've seen the team in and where they've been and where they are now. Well, when I started, it was in the fourth division, the old fourth division. So we worked our way right up to the Premier League and what all the, all the promotions I've been to, and then all the way down back to non-league, and I'm also yeah. in the 92 club. Oh, you've been to all 92? Yep. Wow. So I've seen all of them on 176 different grounds now. Wow, and there'll be the even league. more this year because of the Well, new... even more, yes. Yeah. But yes, because they've got a lot of league grounds this season as well, so I've been going since I was a young lad. And Amazing. I'll plan on going, what's it, till the end of the day. Fantastic, right. and what would you say is the best moment of your Oldham supporting life? Well, there's two. There's two, really. There was when we beat Sheffield Wednesday, 3-2, and uh, Ian Redfern, Redfern scored a penalty in the very last minute. And when they walked out at Wembley in 1990, I, I never thought I'd see the League day. League Cup final, was that? League Cup final against Notts Forest. I never thought I'd see the day when we played at Wembley. Yeah. But when I saw them walked out that day, wow, my heart was pumping that Pride. day. Yeah, so that's... Them are the two best, best days. You're looking at two, yes. And how does it feel now to be in the National League, obviously it's non-league now. Yeah, yeah. Does it feel strange seeing yeah. your club in yeah. a non-league level? Well, it, as it happened, we've just had new owners took over, so it's give everybody a lift. Yeah. The, the, the clubs give everybody a lift, so it was bad last season. The, the owners couldn't quite get yeah. it right. And there's been a few try. poor owners down the years, is that right? One or two, one or two, okay. but it didn't quite work out for the owners last year. Sometimes it doesn't always work out, but we've got new owners in now, and he's yeah. a local businessman, so all being well, we're, we'll go we'll be on the, up, the, up, the results have not been great lately but we have faith in the manager getting us where we want to go Brilliant. back in the football league well thank you so much for your time best of luck to you and to oldham as well all right thanks a lot that was my date on what i mentioned 93 95 was that the premier league i suppose it would have been yeah 92 93 was the first premier league season yeah nothing. i guess we get relegated in 90 i mean we got relegated in 92 93 so it would have been around these jd sports that and umbro times maybe that time. Ah, yeah, okay, yeah, one. yeah. Oh, that's a nice shirt, that one. I like those old Umbro kits, they're cool. As you would have seen just then from a few of those clips, I did get shown inside the stadium very quickly. There was a bit of work going on inside the ground, so I didn't want to take up too much time from the people who were actually working there on the day. But look, as you would have seen, I did get just shown um, those shirts just there. I was looking at the ones from the Premier League era, um, which were really, really cool to see, those old school Umbro kits with the JD Sports sponsors as well. I also got shown just very briefly in the stands, as you can see now, some of the new stands are a little bit more modern, um, but yeah, a really, really cool club and very nice of them to let me in. But yeah, uncharted territory for them this season. Just look at where they are right now, in and around teams like Halifax in the National League. In the Premier League, playing FA Cup semi-finals against Manchester United and Mark Hughes and playing at Wembley against a great Clough side of uh, Nottingham Forest, which of course they sadly lost to, now playing a non 
league at a non-league level i hope you've enjoyed this video a massive massive thank you for watching please do remember to hit that like button please subscribe if you're new and let me know where you may want me to go next as well thanks again and i'll see you in the next one